Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Astro Imaging channel. It's good to see you all. Uh, I'm back from I'm playing hooky last week. I had a good time. I went to the Sequoia National Park for their sixth annual um, Dark Sky Festival, and we had something like 3,000 people, the ranger told us, uh, come to outreaches of various kinds. The Riverside Astronomical Society, of which I'm a part, was uh, putting on a solar outreach right in smack in the middle of the visitor center. So everybody coming by would have to look through the sun. And of course, the sun was real poopy. I mean, it was very calm weather on the sun, so there wasn't anything to see, and it was real disappointing. But we were there to support them. And then I gave a couple of presentations, one of about uh, five astro images that destroyed the world. It's a really cool presentation, I thought. I don't know why the people walked out, but I thought it was a cool presentation. And then I did the one about night, night, um, um, nighttime nightscape photography, which you guys have seen here on the Astro Imaging channel. Then I went up to Yosemite and, oh, well, no. and then, and then I got back and I went out to GMARS and went imaging for the last three nights. So I'm going to sleep through most of this show and Eric Coles is stepping in. Hamza won't be here today. Hamza's, um, wasn't able to pr finish his preparation and, and time for the, for the show. So he can't be here, but Eric is going to step in and we wanted to kind of experiment with something, you know, there's a lot of YouTubers out there. And if you click on anything about how to do this or how to do that on YouTube, what you get is a is a short, you know, a five or ten minute presentation about, well, the one I was reading today was about how to install a urinal because the urinal out at the G. Morris Clubhouse is leaking and I'm going to have to learn how to do that because I'm the repairman out there. And most of those um, YouTube things are, are kind of short. And so people can just get them and read them and look at them. Uh, Tolga came up with an idea that what we should do is go back through our 250 some shows that we've got on the Astro Imaging channel and clip out the sections, not counting the introductions, not counting the background, not counting some of the other stuff that's important stuff, but you really want to find out about how to do this or how to do that or how to use this particular function in Photoshop or uh, how to schedule that in Sequence Generator Pro, whatever you want to do. You just want the five or 10 minutes related to that. So his idea was that we take the old programs and cut them into five and 10 minute chunks focused around just that particular skill and then get a database of that so that you could all come in and do that. And by the way, we would love help doing this. Um, so if you know a particular program that had a few techniques that you really liked if you could identify which techniques they were where they were and stuff like that and go to contacts at uh, the, the astroimagingchannel.com and tell us about that we'd really you know we'd really help we'd really love that but we also thought it would be good that instead of going with our what are basically 45 minute long presentations with questions that we also come up with some programs now and then where we go through a series of snippets of particular skills and um with hamza not being able to be here tonight eric stepped up and said you know i've got two or three or four of those that i could go through and that's what we're going to do tonight so um without further ado i'm going to turn it over to eric and uh, Eric will take us through that kind of stuff. Okay, now remember, you can make your comments over here on um, Rumble Talk, although very few people are actually using Rumble Talk anymore, so we get a little lonely over here, but that's okay, because most of the people have all actually gone over to the YouTube channel itself, and they're watching the show live on the YouTube channel. And when they're on the YouTube channel, they can do things where they ask the same kind of questions and stuff like that, and we'll relay them to the presenter, whoever that is. And um, you can have your conversations over there. And the nice thing about the conversations over there is they stay with the presentation so that years from now, when somebody's um, watching the presentation, they can see what the comments were um, as, as you go along. And that's one of the reasons we want to preserve that. Okay, Eric? You ready? Yep, I'm all set. Thanks, Take it Alex. away, bud. 
So today or tonight, we're going to talk about starless image. Uh, probably I spend two thirds of my time imaging emission nebula or nebula reflection nebula that has a, a component of a hydrogen alpha emissions. And if you're going to work with those kinds of uh, targets, you really have to know how to take the stars out of your images so you can enhance the red color which is the color of the emission nebula. Now, there are various ways to do it, including those in PixInsight, but I like to use one, maybe two, or three different processes to remove the stars from the images. But, you know, it's not just removing the stars from the images. I, if we have a few minutes, I'll probably show you the value of having a starless image. So let's just get started. I'm going to share my screen. And let me put up the image that I'm going to work with. Uh, this is uh, Lynn's, one of Lynn's dark nebula, and you can see there's a lot of hydrogen alpha emissions. Now, this is a combination of an RGB image and a hydrogen alpha image, and the hydrogen alpha image is used to enhance the red color of this particular nebula. If your eyes were able to see this, which unfortunately we're not, but if we were, all of these emission nebulas would look red. So when we're developing an image, we want that image to kind of look like it might look if we could actually see it. So let's get started. So here is the emission, here's the RGB image in Photoshop. And you can see it doesn't look nearly as bright in the red as the image I just show you, which is posted on AstroBin. So how do we get from this image to the red image that you just saw. So let's start out looking at the hydrogen alpha image. So here it is. Now this is a hydrogen alpha image. You notice that the stars are, are nice and tight. Uh, there are some people that would just take this image and substitute it for the red channel here. So let's try to do that. So I'm going to take this hydrogen alpha image. We have the same field of view. I'm going to mark it all. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go over to the RGB image. I'm going to go to the channels. By the way, let me just expand that just in case you can't see it well. Let's see if we get the highlight button. So you all know about the, the channels menu. I'll turn that off. And I'm going to go to the red channel, and I'm going to paste in the hydrogen alpha image. Command B. So now the red channel is all hydrogen alpha. And you might think, well, you know, that'll do a good job. Of, uh, just all you got to do is substitute it, and you get the red from the hydrogen alpha. And the answer is, this is what you get. You get a really unusual image with colored stars with the wrong color from this. And you really haven't enhanced the red color of the emission. So this isn't going to work. And I'm going to just delete this. So let's go back to the hydrogen alpha image. And I'm going to make a copy of it to start to remove stars. So there's one utility that you can use. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Annie's Astro Actions, but I think we've had Annie on the show before. And let me just expand that again. Let's see. Here's our magnifier. So using Annie's Astro Actions, she has an action, which is remove stars. And so to remove stars on this, all you have to do is, let me undo this, is select this action, play the action, and the stars go away. Well, that was easy. Now, the thing to notice here is that there are some star residues. So let me zoom in on a couple of the star residues. 
And as you get closer, you can see lots of star residues. Here's one here, and here's one here. And unfortunately, if we move this starless image along our processing, that these red halos, these star residues, will show up and give you little artifacts around your stars. Now, you can always start to remove those, and the easy way to do that, on, let's see, we'll select the healing brush. I will sample it here. Star residues are removed. There can be a lot of star residues, and this can be a really long and arduous process to get a good starless image. So let's zoom back out. So that's one way to do it. And I'm going to label this as Annie's Actions. So that's the Annie's Actions way. And by the way, Annie's Actions, I think I have her site up here somewhere. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Eric, if you just send me the link, I'll post it on the bottom of the page. Uh, you know, Toga, I don't have it right now. We just look I'll, up. I'll, I'll look it up and then I'll uh, put it on the description. <laughs> I thought I had it there. But Annie's Actions is a very nice suite of actions in Photoshop. I use a few of them. They're very tuned to astrophotography. And so now we've had Annie's Actions, removing stars. Now, the probably the person that has really promoted uh, tone mapping, which we're going to do a little bit of, let's see here. Is a fellow called J.P. Mezzasiano, and I am a big proponent of tone mapping. He, uh, I learned from, from uh, watching his instructions and his videos, and he has another way of removing stars. And if you find tone mapping, Astro Anarchy, you can download this PDF, and uh, it's not actually posted on a site, but if you... Can you copy this URL, Tolga? Let's see. Let's expand that out a little bit. There's our magnifier. Eric, email me all the um, links, and I'll find the Annie's abstractions, and then I'll put them all okay. on, probably have on the that description below. Show. Should have been prepared, but so if you scroll down, this PDF is downloadable by anyone. There is a um, way to remove stars using the dust and scratches filters, and it's really quite simple. So instead of following this step by step, what I have done, let's go back to Photoshop. So we're going to turn off Annie's actions. We're going to make a copy of the starred image. And we're going to use JP's star removal. And I'll just expand this out. And we'll also, let's see, put the magnifier on again. And I have reduced his process to a series of dust and scratches and I made that into a, an action in Photoshop, which is very easy to do. You just follow his procedure, do one step at a time, and you make it an action. And so now I can take this second layer. I can click on Star Removal, play this action, and the stars go away. Well, you can see the stars have gone away, but not really all that well. So I don't use his process quite as much. It also tends to kind of distort uh, some of the dark areas. And if I wanted to clean this up, then what I would have to do is go in with my healing brush again and get rid of all these star residues. 
which is kind of a bother. And eventually come up with a starless image. There's one more thing that he does, and that is sometimes the dark areas in this will not will be removed by his process. So I make a copy of the background layer. I put it on top, and I change this to darken. So Which basically, kind of any, any area that might have been been harmed by going through his process, I now have repaired by means of a darkening layer of the original background. And I'm just going to merge that down. And so this is JP's. So now we have Annie's actions. We have JP's process. And we have the original image. So we're going to do one more. And let me close Photoshop. And there's, can every, can you still see this? I'm still sharing the screen. Yeah, you're still showing the screen and you've gone okay. to a different program. So I know I've opened the program called Stratton. Stratton is a relatively inexpensive uh, program to remove stars. And it really does a fine job. I get no commission out of this is just the experience I have. And I think I have, uh, let's see. Yes, here is the software for Stratton. Let me make that a little bit bigger. And you can see the URL if you're interested in Stratton. I don't know what Stratton costs. I think maybe $30, $40. So I downloaded Stratton. And I'm going to open up the file. <coughs> and here you see it just imports the file. We can make this a little bigger. And if we, it has a tool here to remove stars from this image. And by the way, there are various uh, parameters you can set where you can remove more stars or preserve more nebula. I've kind of landed in the middle of that. Remove stars from this image. And this will take about 30 seconds. You can see the little temperature gauge in the bottom is analyzing the image. And then it will start removing stars. It shouldn't take too long. I can tell you that removing stars from narrowband images is relatively easy by this these processes. If you get large stars with RGB images and you start to remove them, that can be kind of difficult. But we're not going to cover that tonight. So now we have our starless image. And I'm going to save it as without stars. Yes, I already have a copy of this. And I'm going to close Stratton. And now I'm going to open up the same image without stars. I'm going to mark it all. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to bring it in as the third layer. Okay. And so this is strat. Now you notice if we look closely, I'm going to zoom in here. For some reason, Stratton seems to leave a star or two hanging around, which I don't like. And the way I take care of that is I just go and use Annie's action on top of this and run it. And you all those stars will disappear. All gone. So the question is, which is best? 
Uh, in some ways, this is subjective, but let's start from the image itself. And let's zoom in real close to see how, what kind of job it did in removing stars. I'm going to move this around with the hand tool. So here is JP. Now, if you look closely, you can see there's a lot of star residues. Let me blink on and off. See where the stars are? You'd rather not have those, but it does a fairly good job. So let's look at Annie's actions. It does a fairly good job. You lose a little bit of detail, a little bit of contrast, and you can see some star residues, which if you're meticulous like I sometimes am, I will go through and remove every star residue in the whole image to make sure I have a perfectly starless image. And you'll see why in a few minutes. And then we have Stratton. And you see Stratton does the best job. Very, very few starless images, probably better than Annie's action and better than JP's process. So my recommendation is, is to use Stratton for your star removal process. Uh, let's zoom back out. So there we see our starless image. Oh, you know something? Here's a little star residue over here. I'm going to clip that out. Bye. No star residue. So now we have our starless image and our starred image. So now that we have our starless image, you, you'd want to say, well, so what? What is it good for? Well, let me give you an example of what it is good for. I'm going to go over here to the, the Stratton image. And I'm going to run Annie's action on to remove that last residue of stars. And I'm now going to remove that one little star on the far side, that residue over here, which I didn't like. So now here's my starless image. Now what do I do with it? Well, this is a grayscale image, but we're going to convert this to RGB. Now why do I do that? The reason I do that is I want to use this these emissions without stars to enhance the RGB image that you saw earlier. And so I'm going to go into the channel. First of all, I'm going to select a black brush. So this is 100% black. Can you see that? So now our brush in Photoshop will be black. I'm going to go into channels and get the green channel. I'm going to get the big pencil, big pencil, and blacken the whole thing out. Then I'm going to go into the blue channel. I'm going to blacken that out too. So now my image is red. And these are the hydrogen alpha emissions from this particular nebula. So how do I transfer those red emissions as a background for the RGB image? I'm going to make a copy of it, mark all, copy. I'm going to go over to my lens bright nebula. I think this is what, 234 to 234. And I'm going to paste that red layer on top. Yeah, did I copy it? So that doesn't look very good. So how do I add that layer to the layer down below without, without having this starless image? And the easy answer is, I'm going to use it as a lightning layer. And you can see what you do is you just turn on the light, showing all the red emissions on that nebula. And if you want, you can go into the levels 
if you want to bring a little more or less red into your mission nebula, depending on what your tastes are, you can simply adjust that histogram and make it lighter or not quite as light. So I like it about here. The other way you can adjust the impact of that red layer is by just changing the opacity up here. Now you see what we've done, we've added a red background showing the emissions on what is an emission nebula without losing any of the detail or distorting the colors of the stars. So if we zoom in close here, you see our, well, we don't want to zoom in quite that close. Our stars are still the right color. All we've done is add a red background. And since this is an emission nebula, you expect that nebula to be red. Uh, why don't I take a short pause here? Do you have any questions so far? Toga? Alex? Working on it here. Remember, we got to get our mics back on. That, um, all, looks, that all looks okay, Alex. Uh, we only had one question about uh, Stratton, w wondering if it was a, uh, a standalone program or if you could use it in Pix and Sight. I answered it in the comments that it is a standalone program. It's a standalone program. It's been around here forever. I don't know how popular it is for that purpose, but I find it to be the most effective way to remove stars without having to spend an hour getting rid of star residues. Uh, I would second, uh, it's probably a tie between JP's process and Annie's action, but I like Annie's actions because basically you get that process and you know 20 more things that you can use sometime. Uh, and, if you go back and you look at one of our shows where Annie has come on and give her presentation, you might find other things that are useful. And I think, I can't remember, it's about $30. So it's a pretty inexpensive uh, group of action for Photoshop. Okay. So, oh, wait, wait, Eric, 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 yes. uh, does Stratton do things besides remove stars? Nope. That's all it does. Okay. But, you know, if you do tone mapping, you, you live and die by these starless images. So the ability to make star starless image is key to any of these tone maps, any of these Hubble palette images that I do, enhancing any of the emission nebulas and RGB image. It, it is an essential tool and skill that you need to master. And it will only work with monochromatic images and as well. It will, it will not work with RGB images. So what if you want to do an RGB image, remove the stars, you can just break it up into components and do it three and it'll combine it. It'll also do batch kind of work, but uh, I don't really do a batch process. If I can tell you though, Stratton will, will kind of fail on you if you have a, a million stars in your image and there's not much room between them and it's an RGB image, it will produce a hot mess, which you won't like. But if you're doing narrow band images of emission nebula or Hubble palette images, then removing stars is an essential skill. So there's one more thing that we do with, with this. And let's, let's go through that as well. Let's go back to our without stars. I'm going to close this without saving it. Same changes, no. I'm going to come over here to Stratton. So this is my starless image. I'm going to make a copy of it. I'm going to put it over on top. So now we have our starless gray image on top of here. And why have I done this? Well, let me do one thing first. We're going to get detail out of this. I'm going to make six copies of this. I'm going to put them all in a folder. And I'm going to call this folder high pass filtering. Now let's just call it high pass. So what does high pass filtering do? Let's uncheck each of these and just take one. And I'm going to zoom in 
on a little bit of detail that I want to enhance. This is right here. So here's our image. And here's our starless image. I'm going to go up to the filter menu, go down to other, select high pass. And I'm going to make a series of high pass filters. Let me move over the, so this is 16. I'm going to set it. Let's see exactly what this does, because this is somewhat of a mystery. I'm going to set this radius at one pixel. Now we can't really see any detail. So if you're going to do high pass filtering before I get to how this works, you want to zoom in and set your radius to the point where you start to see some of the edges of these emission nebula structures or dark structures. Now I can, I don't know if we can see this. Let's zoom in. Let's try this again. I'm going to zoom in all the way. Yeah, maybe that's a little far. Bring up the high pass filter. Set it at two pixels. And if you look closely on your screen, you can see start some of the outline of that nebula. And what the high pass filter will do is we will darken those areas to the point where it accentuates it and gives you a more pleasing image. But we're going to do this in a series of layers. So I'm going to say OK. Now, before we move on, let me just bring up the histogram. Uh, where is my histogram? And I'll turn on my little zoom. Here we have our, so here we have our slight outline. I assume you can see that. And if you look at the histogram up here, you have clipped everything except for a couple of pixels. And what you've done is define the edges of the light and the dark area within the image. I'm going to turn that off. So how do we apply that to the layer down below? And the answer is we're going to convert this from a normal layer to an overlay layer. So now we've overlaid that very narrow histogram, accentuating the edges of the nebula. And let me zoom all the way in. And I'm going to turn that layer on and off. That may be hard to see right now, but those edges are a little better defined. I'm clicking it on and off. So now we're going to go to the next level. And I'm going to go through the high pass filter again. And I'm going to make this, let's say, four pixels. Now, I usually start from one or two and maybe go up to as much as 24. But you have to go through experimentation. There's no right and wrong way to do it. It really depends on the detail of your hydrogen alpha emissions and the fine quality of your starless image. So we're going to go to four pixels. And now we can see the nebula starting to come out a little bit. The histogram is a little bit wider now. And I'm going to apply that as a overlay image. And now we can see some of the detail showing up. Now let's zoom out. I'll click it on and off again. So now we have a third layer. And I'm going to go, let's say, we're going to go through this fairly quickly. High pass filter. Let's go to, I don't know, six. We're going to apply it as an overlay. And I think you can clearly see now we're getting more detail and more fine edges out of those emissions. And let's just zoom in right here. So it's with the high pass filter and without. So we've sharpened up 
those edges on the emission nebula. And I'm going to do two more quick ones. Let's say filter other high pass 12 pixels. And now we get into some of the larger structures. And I'm going to use those as an overlay. Now, what can happen as you go into these higher numbers or high pass, you can get these images to look a little choppy. So because the high pass filter will also amplify some of the noise. And so I probably am going to reduce the opacity of this to 50%. And let's say the last one is 24 pixels filter other high pass 24 pixels for nice large structures. We'll make that an overlay layer. And I'm going to change that. I only want about 25% of that layer. We don't want it to be too ragged. So let's go through this again. So now we have our regular RGB image. We've generated the starless image. We blackened out the G and the B layers. So the starless image is now red. And that represents the hydrogen alpha emissions in this emission nebula. And we put it on top of the regular RGB image. And we made it a lightning layer. And we can adjust that layer to bring in as much red as we want. Off, all the way on. And we can also adjust the histogram to heighten it even more if you like more red in your image. And we've taken the same starless image. And we've used high pass filtering at various levels, starting with 2, 4, 6, 12, and 24 pixels. And that brings out the detail. And that's our final image. Any questions? There was one early on that I don't believe we've covered. John at Astra wanted to ask um, on the side, yeah, how did you develop your original narrowband HA image? How did you prepare that one? What would process? I mean, how did I do the RGB image? No, no. How did you do the HA channel? How was it originally processed up? Oh, the all the stacking and all the corrections and everything is done in PixInsight. Okay. And so. the initial stretching is done in PixInsight, and the uh, if there's any noise removal, that's done in PixInsight. Then it's it's uh, exported as a P, as a TIFF file and then brought in the Photoshop. And that's the image that you saw me start with. Okay. That's our weekly image. And I remember this one was probably around six hours. You have six I, hours worth of data, did you say? Six hours worth of data with the uh, Riccardi Honda's uh, F3.8 okay. and a dark night. Nothing like a dark night. Yeah, dark dark helps an awful lot. With dark that. helps a lot. Yeah. Uh, let's see, where are we? <laughs> Um, there's a couple. Oh. Can I just give a couple bits of credit here that I, I should have before we started? Yeah, go ahead. Adding HA to RGB data, I got that from uh, Bob Frankie. And if you go to bf astro.com, there's a tutorial on how to do that. And he has actually done the same thing. Uh, let's see. Yep, you see here's his image without and with, and he's enhanced it. The only difference that what Bob uses, he doesn't use starless image. He just uses the regular uh, hydrogen alpha image to enhance it. But give credit to Bob Frankie. I didn't invent any of those techniques, and I think high pass filtering, I'm not sure where I got that. Tone mapping I got from JP, and I use Annie's. Astro images. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing. And uh, Tolga has prepared, uh, he's found the links for some of that stuff and put it into the definitions for the YouTube program so that uh, anybody coming along later looking at the YouTube program will be able to find that if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, so what you have to do, Tolga, I'm sure you caught that. You should put in JP's uh, tone mapping. I would put in Astro, uh, Annie's Astro uh, imaging for those actions and 
put in Stratton if you want to, and I would also put in uh, Bob Frankie's link for that HA enhancement. And even if even if we don't get them tonight, sometime in the next couple of days, we can communicate by email and we can still type in changes in, in the comment section and for YouTube. Um, there was another comment from Jeffrey Schokler who added that you can use dust and scratches um, and on each high filter, high pass filter, uh, applying a couple of three pixels max to reduce the noise impact on the high pass areas affected by the dark structures is what he writes here. You know, sometimes what I do uh, once I, it depends on how noisy uh, the HA images were. This one was fairly quiet. I might take the starless image, bring it back into PixInsight and just remove some of the small bits of noise very lightly, give it a light touch. Because anytime you do high pass filtering, you're always amplifying the, the noise as well as the detail. So I will do if I find that the HA image is a little bit noisy, I take it back into Pix Insight. And by the way, that you know, there's probably 20 different ways at least to um, to remove stars, but these are just the ones that I use. And again, I probably land on Stratton as being the easiest and quickest. I remember back in our first or second year, Josh Smith, I think was, did a, did a whole program on um, starless images. So there's another resource for you that's available in our um, old files back there. Yeah, actually, Josh uses a slightly different way of doing it, but the same idea using high pass filtering. But I think he, he makes two layers for each level of high pass filtering really one above and one below to kind of bracket it a little bit. Uh, I've tried that. I'm not, it didn't, wasn't any advantage, but I think if you have um, images that are a little noisier, it probably does help. High pass filtering will bring out noise. You do have to be careful about that. But it also brings out detail in Nebula. It's like taking a camera lens and just cranking it into focus a little bit. Of course, at that point, you see all the little Bumps and dimples and everything else, you know, imperfections. What I'll do sometimes is, oh, by the way, all four links are on the description on the bottom of the video. Oh, uh, thanks, Tolga. So what I'll do sometimes is that after I do the high pass filter and the group, the folder that you create, I'll put a mask on the folder, the entire folder, and then take a paintbrush and actually uh you know go uh uh you know one by one like paint the areas that i want to highlight yeah you gotta be careful with that paintbrush but I, I'm just saying like you know sometimes it's noisy i i would say that if in this kind of image which is why i chose the uh, lvn 234 there's detail throughout the entire image but if you have an HA image where the nebula is fairly compact and the outer areas don't have much, you're right. You probably want to paint out those areas because all you're doing is amplifying noise and just get to the, the real detail. But it depends on your image whether you want to select or not select certain areas. OK, I think we've got everything that uh, has been commented on as we're going through there. Uh, I want to thank Eric for presenting those several pieces of, of uh, techniques for removing stars and for the overall program of how he does the whole thing. Uh, all that stuff is really important. Um, and I think you can see how this was, show was a little different than other shows that we've done in that there, there was, you. it could be, it can be um, dissected into various parts so that we can actually just, you know, if you wanted to see a five minute presentation on how Annie's actions are used to remove stars, you can get that. Or if how Stratton is used to remove stars, you can get that. And we'll be able to break it up later. Now, I don't know if we'll have the manpower to do that, the woman power, the power power, the human power. We don't, it's, it's as you know, Terry, Tolga, Molly, sometimes me, um, Eric and uh, occasionally other people pitch in and stuff like that. Uh, Adam certainly is in the background all the time. You guys, I got asked about Adam again today, and uh, Adam's fine and um, he's he's there, uh, so he, he's just not 
out here with us all the time anymore. Um, but we all get together now and then and try to work out what we're doing. We need more people that can help us do that kind of stuff. We need particularly somebody who knows how to operate the streaming software. Um, Tolga is going to, Tolga may well be presenting next week. We haven't fi um, arranged for a final presenter for next week. And Tolga has been the director. We were teasing him today because we were apparently not having our heads high enough up on the screen. So the director had to chastise us all. So you notice you can see me right here right now. Anyway, that's what Tolga was doing. Well, Tolga is going to be presenting next week. And he, so he's not going to be able to do all that. And, um, or maybe he's not going to be presenting. Maybe we'll have some other presenter. But the point is, we need more people that can step in and help us with this. Um, please hit contact at the astroimagingchannel.com. And um, if you've got any expertise or willing to learn some of these things, we could use your help. I think we've mentioned before that we have incorporated, we actually had a meeting of the board of directors. Um, the board of directors includes me and uh, Tolga and Adam and Eric. And uh, we are a California corporation now and have applied for a nonprofit organization. Um, the reason we applied for the, for the nonprofit organization was for a couple of things. Uh, the reason why we applied to be a corporation was that corporations have a life of their own. And if I get tired of doing this, I can quit. But if I am the Astro Imaging Channel and I quit, it disappears. But if the Astro Imaging Channel is an entity unto itself, then it can continue on. And I can step out for a while without it hurting the Astro Imaging Channel and all the people that like to tune in on Sunday nights. So 56 of us that see us any given night and about 1,000 over the course of the next week that drop in and watch the program. Um, so that's why we went to being a corporation in the first place. The reason we went to a nonprofit corporation was first off, there's no money involved in all this other stuff. There are some expenses and it is unfair to, you know, like ask each of us just to pull it up out of our pockets and, and pay for it. Um, so it's better to have an, a separate entity that we don't have to just hit one of us up every time we do something. Um, so, so now there is a separate entity that can pay for the expenses and stuff like that. But more importantly, nonprofit organizations can take part in some Google um, programs that would really help us, including Hangouts. We've managed to overcome the problem with YouTube uh, canceling its streaming services. Um, Tolga has found a substitute for that. And we've got some other help from some other people who have suggested some other things. And we're going to be exploring them too that might be even better to, to work with. Um, but we're, we're, doing, we're doing okay on, on YouTube bailing on us. We haven't fix the problem that may come up in October, November, at some point we hear hangouts for the general public is going to die, but it is going to be continuing in its corporate series. And from what I understand in, uh, in its um, uh, G suite for nonprofits, that's why we wanted to become a nonprofit. Um, so that's, that's what we've done. I'm coming back to guys. We need you to contact at the astroimagingchannel.com. You just go to the website there and it, there's a little uh, uh, link on the top for the contact. We need you to contact us. And we also need you when you're looking at a YouTube video from the Astro Imaging Channel to subscribe to the channel. When we get to certain levels, we have more power and it's just easier for us to get things done. So please keep that in mind along the way. Okay, subscribe. I, we appreciate that 7,400 of you already have subscribed, but uh, 10,000 is a magic number. And if we can get there, we really would appreciate it. And finally, we always like presenters. We know there are people out there that it's a little awkward to sit here and you know, like right now I'm looking at a little eye looking back at me at the top of the screen and uh, you know, try to talk about it, but really you're just, that's all you're doing. You're just sitting here like Eric just did processing a picture. And if you can process a picture or if you've taken a bunch of pictures of your imaging rig, or you went to a star party and took a bunch of pictures of other people's astro imaging rigs, it'd be pretty cool to hear from you. 
you know? And uh, so contact at the astroimagingchannel.com. We could use your help. Okay. I don't want to ramble. Besides, I just spent three nights imaging out of GMARS, and boy, was it good. It was really, really good. We had nice, clear nights and very little wind and the big old Milky Way up there. And it just kept running all night, all night, all night. I was really tired. So, uh, Eric Tolkateri, uh, anybody got anything to say before we sign off? Uh, it's just that um, somebody was asking if there's a uh, final version of that image posted on Astrobin or somewhere else. Um, Eric, uh, if you yes, can, sir. can you send me that uh, link? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put that on the uh, description as well. Share the screen. <sighs> That's it. Uh, well, I can't. I can't read the uh, link. Could, could you? Uh, could you? Could you send that on the message, on the side? Hold on one sec. Okay. There, there, were, there were a couple comments over on Rumble Talk um, from Bob. Uh, well, uh, Rob and I have been discussing the the quality of the video that you're seeing out there. Um, uh, you know that it doesn't seem to be as high quality as it should be. And I'm sorry, I'm not technical enough to know the answer to that question. I, I just don't know the answer to why it is different than what you might have wanted. I do know that when I show one of the screens full size, I get pretty good quality. It's always a problem when you when the presenter's got a high res monitor and uh, you, you just can't see all the details very well. That's why um, Eric was using the, the Windows magnifier there for a while, but it is always a, a problem for us. Um, and um, uh, Bob also said that he needs to get controls on all those wires on my scope. Yeah, who knows who's who's been who's an expert on that? There's got to be somebody out there of all you people who's an expert on how to get control of the wires on your scope. And you got pictures of people that didn't do a good job of it. And you got pictures of people who put computers at the top of their scope so they've only got one little power cable going all the way up and stuff like that you really need to do a show on the astro imaging channel you really do so please do okay bob that's too big a question for us to answer tonight but i can tell you that you do have to minimize those cables and you do have to tie them if you've got a german equatorial mount you want to tie one right at the end of your deck where uh, all the cables come together and then try to have just one cable going down. There's, there's some argument about that, but to the point where you've got a little loop from where the deck rotates down to um, a, a loose area, slack, to where the RA rotates. And then you got a little bit there. And otherwise, everything's real tight and tied down. So there are other ways to do it. Okay, there are some past shows where we did talk about it a little bit, but I don't think that at any one point we made a whole show on just that particular issues. And I don't think any of us are capable of just remembering which show did what right now. So um, maybe we'll look it up and we'll figure out what we can do. Okay, so um, any other questions coming up? Then I'm going to say good night. And I welcome you back for next week. We've got a whole lot of other people lined up in the weeks after that. And Tolga's going to be doing next week. Uh, I, we've got a few other people that have tentatively said they will be here. But uh, we will have a good show for you next week, we hope. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye and good night. Good night, all.